Hello students, welcome to this new video. In this video, we are going to discuss the physics paper of NEET 2021. The NEET 2021 was conducted on the 12th of September this year. So, physics paper, if you look at it, it the physics paper was not on the easier side. Definitely, it was moderate or even on the tougher side. If we compare with a NEET standard, usually compared to last year this year paper was slightly tough but again the students who have studied well they will find out the paper to be average only not very difficult also so but yeah it was on the tougher side not at all on the easier side so here we are going to discuss the section a first of all of need 2021 paper okay in the section a there were 35 questions right so one by one we will discuss all the questions. Now look at the first question on your screen. Right. So now we'll start with this solution. Look at it. In this question there is a PQ wire okay, which is an infinitely long wire. In this PQ wire the current of 5 ampere is running. Right. And from this wire at a distance of 20 centimeter over here. Here one electron is there that is minus E. This electron is running like this with a velocity V okay, which is given to be 10 power 5 meter per second. Right. So we have to find out the force acting on this electron. First of all suppose the point at which electron is right now present that point let us suppose it is point A. So first of all we have to calculate the magnetic field at point A. The magnetic field at point A, it will be the magnetic field due to this straight wire. This magnetic field will be mu0 i by 2 pi r. Now the value of mu0 by 2 pi is always 2 into 10 power minus 7. Value of mu0 by 2 pi. i is a current that is 5 ampere and r is a distance that is 20 centimeter. 20 into 10 power minus 2. Okay. When you solve it, it will come 0 0.5 into 10 is to power minus 5 Tesla. It is a magnetic field at A point. Now at the A point, the electron is present. The force acting on the electron will be QVB. Okay. Here the angle between V and B will be 90 degree. So no need to take sin theta. So here Q is a charge of electron that is 1.6 into 10 is to minus 19. V is the velocity of electron that is 10 is to power 5 and B is a magnetic field that is we calculated. Just I am substituting that. So when you solve it, it is 0 0.8 into 10 is to minus 19 that is 8 into 10 is to minus 20 Newton. Okay. Which is a option 4 in this question. right? So, option 4 will be correct for first question. Okay. Let us move to the question number 2. Okay. See, now this question is from oscillation chapter. In the question it is said that uh, the frequency of oscillation is n. n is the frequency of oscillation. Okay. Then we have to find out the frequency of potential energy. Now see, it is a very well known point in the books also you can find it that uh, if uh, the body is performing SHM with a frequency n, then potential energy also changes, potential energy also oscillates with a double frequency that is 2n. So answer to this question will be 2n. Okay. Those who do not understand that how it is 2n, okay, many methods are there, we can prove it mathematically using trigonometry. Without mathematics also, just physically also we can understand that why it is 2n. So I am explaining that. See, suppose this is x equal to 0, x equal to minus a, x equal to plus a. Between these points the body is oscillating. Okay. So body let us suppose start from x equal to 0 and then it will oscillate. Okay. When body oscillate its potential energy also changes. Right? So the potential energy I am plotting over here with x. Now see, when body is at x equal to 0, its potential energy is also 0. Okay. When it goes to x equal to a, 
potential energy become max okay so when it goes x equal to a its potential energy become max see here from zero as it goes to a its potential energy increases okay like this suppose okay then it comes back again here the potential energy will drop to zero If here x I am not plotting, let's suppose if I plot the time, so potential reaches to max again. It body comes here, potential becomes zero. Here potential becomes zero. Now body will go on this side. Again here potential energy become max. It is this way. Okay. Again body comes back here, potential becomes zero. Right. Okay. Like this. Okay. So if you observe here, the body has finished one oscillation. Okay, but in this one oscillation, the potential energy has changed two times, from zero to max and then max to zero, two times. Here one time, and here second time. So when body finishes one oscillation, the potential energy completed its two cycles. These are the two cycles of the potential energy. That's why its frequency is double. The frequency of potential energy as well as the frequency of kinetic energy is double. Like that. So answer to this question will be two n. Okay. Now we'll go for question number three. Okay, look at the question number three on your screen. Okay. Okay. Now this question three is from the radioactivity section. Okay. Okay. In this one, there is a radioactive nuclear which is X, Z, and A. Z is a atomic number, A is a mass number. Now it changes to the B nuclear with Z minus one. A not given, but uh, Z is given. Z minus one. If you look at it here, Z is dropped by one. No? Now, in the theory, we know that if Z is dropping by one, it must be beta plus particle emitted. With emission of beta plus, Z drops by one. Okay. Okay. Those who do not know the reason that why beta plus, so look here. In this beta plus decay, what happens? Actually, inside the nucleus, the proton converts into neutron by release of one positron. Positron is written this way. Okay. This is positron and also it is a beta plus particle, you can say. So, beta plus decay involves the conversion of proton into neutron. So, that is why this proton is lost in this reaction. That is why the proton number decreases by one. After that, it converts into C that is Z minus 3 given. Here if you observe Z is dropped by 2 this time. Okay. Now Z dropped by 2 whenever alpha particle is emitted that you know. So here alpha must be emitted. Then it converts into D Z minus 2. Observe carefully Z minus 3 becomes Z minus 2. So here again Z rise by 1 actually. Here Z is rising by 1 and Z rises by 1 whenever beta minus particle is emitted, beta minus decay. So here the sequence of uh, alpha beta particles which are emitted, the sequence will be beta plus, then alpha, then beta minus. This is the answer to this particular question. Okay. It is option number 3 will be there. Okay. Clear? Now I am going to the question number 4. Okay. Question 4 is being taken from the gravitation chapter. Look at the question 4. Okay. Yeah. Now, it is a question based on escape velocity. So, see to it. The escape velocity from any planet, it is given by under root of 2 gr. Okay. Now, in this question, if you observe, earth and the other planet is given. Densities of earth and other planet is same that is given in the question. Okay. So, we have to convert this formula first of all in terms of density. So, this small g which is the acceleration due to gravity it is given by g rho 4 upon 3 pi r. This value of small g first of all I will substitute to value of small g I am substituting. Okay. This is the value of small g into r is there so it become r square ultimately. This is suppose escape velocity from earth. Let us take it is from earth. So, write out just v. Okay. 
Now, we want to find out SK velocity from other planet. In case of other planet, formula will remain same only. Okay. Density of other planet is same as density of Earth. Only radius is 4 times. So, the R will become 4R for the other planet. Like this it will come. So, of course, it is 4 square that is 16. Root of 16 will come 4. Inside it remain same. So, this is a escape velocity from earth that is v into 4. So, escape velocity from that planet will be 4v that is option number 4 will come. Clear? So, we have to find out escape velocity from other planet. Density is same, radius become 4 times. So, escape velocity also become 4 times. Okay. Clear? Okay. Now, we will go for question number 5. Look at the screen. Question number 5. Now see, it is again based on radioactivity. See, the question says that uh, half life of a substance is 100 hours. Okay. And we have to find out that how much fraction of the substance remain undecayed um, after 150 hours. How much activity remains after 150 hours? See, activity. Activity is nothing but dn upon dt, the rate of decay is called activity. So usually we denote this activity by a symbol okay. and the activity also follows the same rule like radioactive nuclei follows. Activity is also given by a equal to a0 e raised to minus lambda t. You know that after one half life, the number of nuclei become half, activity also become half. Okay. So, after m half lives, if you go for after m half lives, okay, the activity reduces to 1 upon 2 raised to m times initial activity. See, you know that this formula is there. After m half lives, number of nuclei become 1 upon 2 raised to m of initial number. Here also, after m half lives, activity also becomes same way. So, okay. if it is given 100 hours, that is a half life. But we have to find after 150 hours. That you can understand 150 hours means 1 point half life, right? See, 100 hours is a 1 half life. So, 150 hours is a 1.5 half life. This m I will put 1.5. Okay. m is 1.5. 1.5 means 3 by 2. So, it is just uh, solve it. 2 raised to 3 by 2 if you solve, it will be 2 root 2 a by a 0. So, this is a fraction of activity which is 1 upon 2 root 2. Root two. So that is the answer to this question. So that is option number 2 will come. Here main important idea is you should understand that 100 hours is a 1 half life. So, 150 hours means it is a 1.5 half life. So, this m you need to put 1.5 that is the thing and a 0 denotes initial activity. Okay. This was question number 5. Now, we will go for question number 6. Look at the question 6 in the screen. Okay. Now, it is a question based on ray optics. Okay. In this question, it says that uh, there is a convex lens of focal length 20 centimeter. After that, concave lens is also placed. Focal length minus 5 centimeter. Okay. And the uh, distance between these two lenses is D. Right. Okay. So, on this convex lens, parallel beam of light is coming. Okay. After that, definitely light will, if it is parallel, it will meet at focus. Then it fall on the second lens this way. Then it is given in the question that uh, the light is leaving the second lens also parallel. Like that. This is a diagram for this particular question. Okay. So, from here we can understand the object is at infinity, right? When object is at infinity, the rays meet at focus. This must be the focal length, okay? That is 20 centimeter. 
then for this concave lens also same logic is there here the rays are going parallel no okay the rays are ultimately emerging parallel so rays always emerge parallel when they come from the focus okay rays coming from focus okay they emerge parallel definitely this length will also be focal length only okay it's a focal length of first lens this is focal length of second lens so d must be equal to sum of the two focal length of a lens plus b lens you can see the diagram and understand it this is 20 this is 5 total it comes 25 cm there's a d and we have to find d only in this okay so for six question 25 cm will be the answer right now i'm moving to the question number 7 okay. it's right on the screen look at it okay in this it is being said that there is a capacitor which is getting charged by applied voltage V which is equal to V0 sin omega t. This way you imagine. Okay. With this one the charging of the capacitor will continue. Since it is alternating voltage charging discharging will continuously go. Okay. Now here we have to find out the displacement current. Okay. Okay. So see first of all charge on the capacitor at any moment will be Q into C into V, okay. But V is given by V0 sin omega t. So this is a formula for charge at any time t on the capacitor. So if you take derivative of this dq upon dt C V0, derivative of sin omega t will be cosine omega t and here omega will also be multiplied. dq by dt gives you the charging current the current which is responsible for charging this capacitor that is conduction current so it will be omega c v0 cos omega t but conduction current and displacement current are equal only the displacement current is also this much omega c v0 cos omega t very simple three step question so answer will be this one displacement current is v0 omega c cos omega t that is the option number one given option 1 will be there clear ok so now we will go for question number 8 question 8 is taken from the loss of motion topic ok if you read the question in this one one inclined plane is given the body is falling on the inclined plane like this the body starts from 0 speed and you know that on inclined plane it is falling so it is a smooth inclined plane given. So, friction will not be involved. So, in case of smooth inclined, the acceleration of this body will be definitely g sin theta. That you know. So, acceleration of the body will be g sin theta which is a constant. It is a constant acceleration. And now, we have to find out distance covered by this body in the nth second divided by distance covered in n plus 1th second. Right. So, the formula for distance covered in nth second is given by u plus right a by 2 in the bracket 2n minus 1 okay. here also same formula to n won't come n plus 1 will come right minus 1 this way just here n substituted here n plus 1 substituted now u definitely will be putting 0 u gone it's 0 will put then after that a by 2 a by 2 also cancel acceleration will be g sin theta only always cancel so it's coming 2n minus 1 and the denominator when you solve it will be 2n 2n plus 2 and then minus 1 2n plus 1 will come okay. so answer will be 2n minus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 that is option number 2 will come right that is eighth question okay so it's simple not that difficult questions now we will go for question number 9 ok. If you look at the question number 9 in this one it says that uh, a body is released initial speed we can take 0 a body is released from certain height that height is given s from s height it is released. So body will go down like this ok continuous it will go ok at one particular point that particular point suppose the velocity of the body is v at this point the kinetic energy of the body is three times its potential energy right. 
Okay. So, using this data, we have to find out the height of this point, this h we want to find. Okay. And also v, velocity at that instant, this h also we need to find and v also we need to find. Okay. So, try to understand these two things we have to find out. Okay. So, how to do it? Okay. See, first of all, if it is this distance I am calling h. So, this distance that has already been covered, it will be s minus h, right. Okay. In this topic, you know the formula that uh, when the body falls by distance h, okay, if the body falls by distance h, its velocity become root of 2 g h. Okay. After falling by h distance, velocity become root of 2 g h. So, here after falling by s minus h distance, velocity will become this much. This is a formula for velocity. Okay. Now, after that, we will go for this. Kinetic energy is 3 times its potential energy. So, kinetic energy at this particular point will be half mv square, 3 times potential energy at this point will be mgh. Okay. So, half mm gets cancelled. Okay. V square, this is the value of v. Na. Let's put here v square value. Okay. So, it will be 2g s minus h equal to 3gh right. So, this 2 to cancel gg cancel s minus h equal to 3h just solve it h will come s by 4 okay. h is s by 4. This value of h if you substitute over here you can get velocity as well root of 2g s minus s by 4 right. like that correct. So, it is 2g 3s by 4, it is a root of 3gs by 2, right. So, h I got here and velocity I got here 3gs by 4. So, according to this if you go option 4 will be correct for this particular question, okay. So, this was question number 9, okay. Now, we will go for question number 10, okay. Look at the question 10 on the screen, okay. It is a question based on potentiometer, very easy question. In case of potentiometer, when we use the potentiometer to find out the unknown EMF of a cell, okay. it is unknown EMF is E, it is given by k times balancing length, where k is a potential gradient. Now, here in the first case, this E is given 1.5 k, L is a balancing length which is given 36 centimeter. In the second case, E become 2.5 volt, K again and this L is we have to find out like that. So, two cases are given EMF 1.5 then 2.5. When you change the unknown EMF, K do not change, K is a constant. So, this way we can write, if you divide these two equation, it is 1.5 divided by 2.5, it is 36 by L. So, this is nothing but 3 upon 5. 36 by L. Please solve it. L will come 60 centimeter. Right? That is option number 1 will come for this. Okay. That is the thing. Okay. So, here question 10 completed. Let us go for question number 11. Now, if you look at question number 11, it is based on electromagnetic wave. In electromagnetic wave, you must be knowing one concept that uh, direction of the propagation of the wave is given by E cross B, right. So, here different different options of electric and magnetic field are given, E and B are given in a different different way. We have to find out the correct value of E and B in the question. See, here electric field and magnetic field, okay, these two are also perpendicular to each other, okay. See, just first of all physical idea of this question I am giving. Suppose this is y axis, this is z axis and this is x axis. Okay. This case we can rotate. Now, here the wave is propagating along x axis. x axis is the direction of propagation of wave. So, definitely the electric and magnetic field, they will be lying in a y z plane. Okay. Out of that if, suppose electric field lies over here in the minus y z plane. Then magnetic field has to lie here in the plus y z plane. See this logic we can understand from here this way. So, E and B need to be perpendicular. This is somewhat physical idea of this question. 
see so electric field suppose it lies in a minus y and z axis between them it lies so magnetic field has to lie between plus y and plus z axis right so that is a concept here so electric field has to be suppose minus j plus k in that form so magnetic field has to be in the form of plus j plus k like that okay actually if you understand this you can see option 2 will match with it option 2 will match okay in option 2 this is minus j plus k given okay but this is given minus j minus k that is the third quadrant that is also okay the only problem is if e lies in a second quadrant the b should lie in the third quadrant they should not lie in the same quadrant okay see if you um, one by one if you put the option second option will match if i put e this way minus j plus k cap cross product with b b i put minus j minus k cap these are the values of a and b given in the second option different different quadrants that i am checking now if you solve first term will be j cross j that is zero then minus j into minus k it become plus j cross k then it comes as minus k cross j and last k cross k okay so j cross j will be zero k cross k also zero j cross k is i k cross j is minus i so it become 2i yes. and direction of propagation is coming 2i cap which is correct the, it is given in the question that wave is propagating along x axis so i cap should come so if you look at its second option it satisfies this condition your main idea student should know that uh, if e lies in a negative y is a negative y and z b will lie in the some other quadrant okay so based on that second option will be correct okay this was a question number 11 now we go to question number 12 it's a theory question about polar molecule okay polar molecules are those which are already having a dipole moment in polar molecule the positive charge of the atom or the positive charge of the molecule is separated from the negative charge of the molecule by some distance this is a polar molecule so according to that option 4 will match okay, okay. option 4 says that polar molecule has a permanent dipole moment it's correct it has permanent dipole moment this is the direction of dipole moment okay so it's correct only okay after that we we'll go for question number 13 okay. look at the question number 13 okay it's based on terminal velocity concept see it is being said that there, there is a small ball of mass m it's falling in a viscous liquid that is glycerine the density of the glycerin is d by 2 and density of the ball is d while falling we have to find out the viscous force acting on it right see when the ball is falling down downward force will be mg viscous force act upward like this okay. a viscous force you know that this viscous force is given by 6 pi eta rv right now not needed but viscous force is that only and also upward it will be upthrust given by glycerin or buoyancy force we can say now in the question it is given that uh, it is falling at a constant velocity so definitely viscous force plus upthrust must be balanced by mg because of this net force on the body will be zero and that's why it's not accelerating it is falling with a constant speed okay upthrust is now given by this formula density of liquid into volume of the ball into g viscous force m is a mass of the ball which is written as density of the ball into volume of the ball into g okay so viscous force will be just solve it viscous force will be dvg by 2 here again d into v it's a density of the ball into volume of the ball it become m g by 2 that is a viscous force it is mg by 2 okay option number 1 will come clear students okay let's go for question number 14 
Now question 14 is a match type question, you have to match the terms, okay. It is based on kinetic theory of gases. In kinetic theory of gases you know that uh, RMS speed is root of 3 RT by molar mass, right. That is um, A will match with Q, right. A will match with Q. Okay. After that if you look at the B that is the pressure exerted by ideal gas. Pressure exerted by ideal gas is 1 upon 3 density of gas into V RMS square this way it is. Density of the gas can be written as mass upon volume of the gas, mass of the gas upon volume. Mass of the gas can be written as number of molecules into mass of one molecule. This way we can just convert. Number of molecule divided by volume, it become number of molecule per unit volume that is written as N over here in this form. So this is usually the formula for pressure exerted. So it is a B in the column 1 will match with a P in the column 2. A is matching with Q, B is matching with P. If you look at it, there is only one option in which a Q and B P this pairing is there ok. So if you want to save the time no need to go for other options just two options must be confirmed that yes these two are confirmed correct based on that uh, you can save your time option 3 is coming right. Check the option 3 it is coming ok. A matching with Q and B term is matching with a P ok. It is a simple match type of question ok. Now I am going to question number 15 look at the 15 question. Here water is falling from the height of 60 meter okay, and it is falling on the turbine the losses are there 10 percent losses. We have to find out power generated by the turbine see the power which is generated by the turbines okay, which it means the output power of the turbines. The output power will be 90 percent of the input energy or input power. Because 10 percent losses are there, na? so 90 percent will only convert into output. So 90 percent, 90 out of 100 into input power. Now see, water is falling from certain height. So the water which is falling from certain height, that water has a potential energy in it, that is mgh. So it is the energy which is received by the turbines and divided by time. So that become the input to the turbine. Okay. It is 9 by 10. This m is a mass of the water that is coming from h height. T is a time. So m upon T that is given 15 kilogram per second. And by T. G you take 10, h is given 60. Okay. So this gets cancelled. Okay. Just solve it. Okay. It is 9 into 6 there is 54 into 150 when you solve it you will get a 8100 it is watts right that is 8.1 kilowatt that is a power generated by turbine okay. option number 2 is there here you need to understand that water is falling from certain height like this okay so this water must be having potential is stored in it that is mgh okay and when it is falling on the turbines this way, okay. So the energy mgh will be given to the turbines in the time t suppose. So this become the input to the turbine, input energy to the combine turbines per second. That is the main thing, okay. Clear? This was question number 15. Now look at the question number 16 on the screen. See it is from the ray optics ultimately. Here we are saying that uh, the astronomical telescope which we have, in astronomical telescope we use the objective lens. This objective lens has higher focal length also it has a great aperture means this, um, this is called aperture this distance. Diameter of the lens is called aperture, aperture is also very high we use and focal length also very high we use. Why is it so? Because when you use a focal length to be high, the magnifying power will increase. You know that magnifying power of an astronomical telescope is FO upon FE. 
under the normal adjustment. So FO will be high, means focal length of objective lens will be high, magnifying power will be high, okay. And also resolving power will be high. Resolving power is given by A upon 1.22 lambda in case of telescope. So as A will be high, A is the aperture of this lens, resolving power will be high, it will be able to resolve better. So this all is correct if you read all options, all of the above is correct for this question. Its resolving power will be more, light gathering power will be more. If A will be high, this astronomical telescope will be able to collect more light also. So all options are correct. So all of the above will come. Okay. Now we will go for the question number 17. Look at the 17 question on your screen. Okay. In this one, they are saying that uh, see to it, it is the N type semiconductor and we are having P type. Okay. Both are separately taken. In this one, you know that electrons are in majority and here are holes are in majority. Okay. Electron concentration and hole concentration given same. They are same concentration. So when you connect a battery to it, suppose here you connected a battery. So definitely electron will flow some conduction will take place. Here also if you connect a battery, holes will flow. Yes, this happens. Holes can also easily move. But the problem is uh, whether current will be same in both of them or not same, when voltage applied is same that we have to find. No, current will be more in case of this N type as compared to P because here electrons, these are free electrons, free electrons are moving. The mobility of free electrons is higher than holes. Holes do not move very easily. Electrons, free electrons are very easy to move. So due to higher mobility, electron will move faster and that is why they will generate more current. Hole also moves but the mobility of holes is less. That is why here current in the P type will be less. So third option will match that current in the N type is more than current in the P type. Okay, right? okay. Now I am going with the question number 18th in this. See to it. Here it says that there is a radioactive nucleus of 240 mass number A. It splits into two nuclei of 120 mass number each. It is kind of a nuclear fission, equal fission is there. That. Now, the binding energy per nucleon of this nucleus is 7.6 mega electron volt per nucleon. It is binding energy per nucleon given. And binding energy of per nucleon, again binding energy per nucleon of this nuclei, it is given 8.5 mega electron volt per nucleon. So using this we have to find out the total gain in the binding energy. Gain in binding energy in slivers there is nothing formula like gain in binding energy but it is common sense. Gain in binding energy we can find out by finding the final binding energy minus initial binding energy. Okay. So finally you see binding energy final it is 8.5 but it is of per nucleon it is of 1 nucleon. So for 120 nucleons I will multiply 120. But two such at nuclei are there. For both of them, in two also multiplied. It is becoming 240 into 8.5, right? Similarly, initial binding energy, if I go, it is 7.6. But it is a binding energy of one nucleon. So for 240, we will multiply 240. 240 into 7.6. So 240 will be taken common, be 8.5 minus 7.6. When you solve this calculation, 216 mega electron volt will come. That is a rise in the binding energy. Right. Okay. This is a question number 18. Okay. Now we will see question number 19. Okay, question number 19 now. See, it is a question from magnetic effect of electric current. A cylindrical conductor is there, suppose like this. It is a thin conductor, but uh, we can show this way, man magnified diagram. Here it is the axis of the conductor. Okay. In this conductor that definitely current is carrying like this I. Okay. Uniformly it is spread. Okay. So here we have to plot the graph of B versus distance from the axis. This you might be remembering it is in the theory. Exactly at the axis here B is 0. Okay. 
it can be found using Ampere's law. Now, as you go away from the axis, B increases. Okay. Inside the conductor, B is directly proportional to R distance. But as soon as you come out of the conductor, B start decreasing because outside it follows this relation mu 0 i by 2 pi r. So, B is inversely proportional to r. So, this kind of a graph is it. It is a very well known graph in the theory. So, this way graph will be there. That is option number 3 will come on this. Okay. So, this was a question number 19. Okay. Now, we will go for question number 20. Look at the question on your screen. Okay. Here it is said that two charge spheres are there okay, and they are connected by the wire. We have to find out the ratio of surface charge densities. See, this is sphere R1 and this is a sphere wing R2. Initially, these spheres may have some charge. Okay. I do not know how much charge they have. They are simply but connected by wire like this. With the connection of the wire, charge will definitely transfer from higher potential sphere to the lower potential sphere and charge will pass until the potential of both of them becomes same. So, after some time, charge flow will stop, potential of the first sphere will be equal to the potential of second sphere, I can take. This is the final potential. Now, suppose final charges on this sphere is Q1 and Q2, final charges. So, potential of the first sphere is given by K Q1 by R1, it is the potential of this sphere. K is 1 upon 4 by epsilon 0, huh? that we have written as a K. K Q2 by R2, right. K K gets cancelled, potentials are equal, huh? take them equal. Okay. So, K K cancel. Now, Q is a charge on this sphere, a charge I do not want to find, I want to find out the surface this charge. Much knowledge you should have that q1 can be written as sigma times 4 pi r square. Charge density into area will be the charge. No? So this try to understand. Sigma 1 r1 will come of course, here r1, here sigma 2 4 pi r2 square divided by r2. So, this gets cancelled, okay, here this will get cancelled, 4 pi cancel, you will get a sigma 1 r1 is equal to sigma 2 r 2. From this one anybody can easily find that sigma 1 by sigma 2 will be r 2 by r 1. Okay. That is the correct answer, option number 2 will come. This way you need to solve it. Okay. This was the question number 20. Okay. So, now question 21, it is on the screen, see to it. It is a question based on dimension. In that one E is a energy and G is a universal gravitation constant. So, we have to find out the ratio of these dimensions. Now, the dimensions of energies are always L2, M1, T minus 2. These are dimensions. The dimension of G, suppose we do not remember. So, at least we should remember the unit of the G. G is given by Newton meter square per kg square, right. Okay. So, Newton, the dimension of force will come L1, M1, T minus 2 meter square that is L2 divided by kg square that is m minus 2. This become the you can say dimensions of G. Now, just simply calculations are there. So, T gets cancelled, L2 gets cancelled, m1 gets cancelled. If you just look it is coming m to the power 2, L to the power minus 1. Okay. This way option 1 will match with it. Simple. So, only you should have a command on the dimension topic, it is very easy then. Okay. So, option 1 will come for this. Now, we will go for question number 22. Okay. Look at the 22 clearly, it is a spring is there. Okay. It is given that a spring is stretched by the force of 10 Newton and then when we apply 10 Newton, it stretches by 5 centimeter. Okay. From this data, we can write down one simple thing. The force applied on the spring is 10 Newton. This force can be written as Kx. The, the restoring force in the spring will also be equal to 10 Newton then, right. So, in that one x is 5 centimeter, 5 into 10 is to minus 2, okay. 10. So, from here K easily anybody can find out, K is 200 Newton per meter. 
it's a spring constant and we have to find out time period of the oscillation now time period of oscillation is given by 2 pi root of m by k in case of spring block so 2 value of pi m mass of the block it is given 2 kilogram k just now we got 200 so it is 1 upon 100 root of 1 by 100 will be 10 so this is 6.28 this multiplication will be 6.28 divided by 10 0.628 will come that is option number 4 will come okay so option 4 is correct for this question okay. clear going for 23 now 23 is again a match type question column 1 and column 2 we had to match but it is now taken from the current electricity chapter okay now again here also if i if we match few options we can get the idea from that you might be remembering that a drift velocity vd is given by i divided by nae it's a very important formula formula for drift velocity so here i upon a is current per unit area it's written as j so j upon any equal to vd okay so this is a one of the formulas of current density uh, current density j equal to any vd okay so current density is mentioned in the fourth d part it is in the column one part d you look at it current density is mentioned so its formula is any vd so current density is given in the d part and any vd is given in the q so d is matching with q first of all okay this way one by one we have to match everything now in the current density you know one formula j is equal to sigma times e yes it is also the formula in the current density j is a current density sigma conductivity e is electric field applied so here sigma is a conductivity which is 1 upon rho resistivity from here electrical resistivity we can find out it is e by j okay so electrical resistivity it is in the b column it's matching with a s so b is matching with s okay and d is matching with q okay if you look at any two options also now suppose these two only i am observing nothing else d matching with q and b matching with s it's only available in the option one okay it's only in the option number one it is available okay so this way whichever thing you know from that you can find out the other things okay this way all formulas can be derived so by looking at two also you can get the answer for this okay other i am not matching because you should save the time okay in mcq of match type remember if one or two option also matches based on that you start searching that which can be the correct answer okay this was the 23 question okay now moving to the 24 24 is from the electrostatics see this way electric field is given like this this way electric field given and here one dipole is kept plus q minus q like that okay so we have to find out the where this dipole will move see how to deal with this question here can you see these electric lines which are drawn uh, they are originating from here if here we can assume that some positive charge will be there because of that these lines are originated this positive charge will repel this one of course this positive charge will attract minus q also this way okay. but it will repel also plus q this way so that is why um, here overall it will be repelled because the force on this force on this plus q will be more because it is closer to this this, this distance is small this force will be more repulsive force will be more and attractive force will be less okay. that is why overall it will be repelled only so dipole is going to move right side okay now after that we are also have to find out that whether potential energy increases or decreases okay see how to find that thing see yeah. simple method i'll tell you see the potential energy which is stored in a dipole potential energy related to the dipole when it is placed in an electric field 
that potential energy is given by minus p dot e okay yes. it's a formula minus p dot e okay which is minus p e cos theta you can write that way it's correct formula okay so if you look at it uh, minus q to plus q this this is the direction of dipole moment p direction of dipole moment and this is the direction of electric field both are at 180 degree to each other so i'll put cos of 180 cos 180 is minus 1 it become ultimately plus p e so right now its potential energy is plus p e now as it moves towards the right side as it moves towards right side while moving right the e will decrease the electric field will decrease as you to go towards right side this e will decrease that's why we can say potential energy also will decrease only it's not going to increase so it's moving towards right side and potential energy will decrease okay in other words i will tell you whenever dipole or any charge positive charge let's suppose when charge moves in the direction of the electric field its potential energy decreases only okay positive charge particularly so that way here also it is moving in the direction of the field na so potential energy has to decrease only when you go against the field the potential energy may increase then so decrease will be there so answer is that it is moving towards right and also potential energy is decreasing that's the answer okay now i'll go to the 25 question see to it okay here statement 1 is given that zener diode is used as a voltage regulator in the reverse bias okay if you have studied zener diode you must be knowing that it is a correct option okay a statement is correct and uh, b statement now b statement said that barrier potential of a pn junction lies between 0.1 volt to 0.3 volt okay. no it is incorrect if i take silicon diode in silicon the pn junction potential barrier is 0.7 volt in germanium also it is 0.3 volt always it lies between 0.1 and 0.3 we can't say okay so that's why b statement is wrong a is true okay so answer will be option 3 a correct b wrong okay like that okay now question number 25 we will go question 25 is based on micrometer screw gauge okay the question says that uh, main scale reading is zero okay and uh, circular scale reading is given 52 divisions that is 52 line of the circular scale so this is circular scale of the screw gauge it's a circular scale 52 line of the circular scale is matching with a reference line okay so this one of course we have to multiply it with least count then it become a proper circular scale reading so we need to calculate least count least count is given by pitch of this screw gauge divided by number of lines present on the circular scale so pitch is 1 mm it is given in the data that 1 mm of the main scale corresponds to 100 100 divisions so pitch is 1 mm number of lines are 100 so 0.01 mm is a least count this count is 0.01 mm into 52 we should multiply it become 0.52 mm that is a circular scale reading now main scale reading added with a circular scale reading gives you the total reading which we have to find out so total reading will be 0.52 mm only okay but in millimeter options are not there you need to convert remember 1 mm is same as 0.1 cm into 0.52 so it become 0.052 cm that is the answer to this particular question okay if you check it option 4 is matching right okay this was 25 question okay 26 completed now we'll go for 27 look at the question on your screen okay it's a question from ac circuits here okay the voltage which is applied the voltage is not properly given okay this voltage v is just applied voltage across inductor resistor capacitor is given as you can see and rms current is given that is 10 root 2 okay ampere this is not a rms current is a peak current okay so rms will be this divided by root 2 
that is 10 ampere is the RMS current. Okay, we have to find out the impedance of the circuit. You can understand that if you want impedance, na, RMS current is already given. You just need to find out the total voltage. In case of series LCR circuit, total voltage is given by under root of VR square, VL minus VC, the whole square. This formula you might be knowing. Voltage across resistance, it is clearly given 40 volt, 40 square. Voltage across inductor is again 40 volt. Across capacitor it is 10, like this it will be. So it is 40 square plus 30 square. Solid definitely 50 will come. 50 volt is a total voltage. Right? Now impedance that is Z is given by VRMS divided by IRMS. This is VRMS only 50 and IRMS as I told you it is 10. So it comes 5 ohms. Impedance must be 5 ohms. Okay, That is option number 4 will match. Okay, So after 27 we are going to the 28th question. See the question 28. Okay. It is based on parallel plate capacitor. We have to find out the energy stored in a capacitor. right? Okay. See the energy stored in a capacitor is given by half Cv square. Okay, half. We have to just convert this C and V into different terms. C is given by epsilon 0 A by D that you know. V, V is a potential difference between two plates of a capacitor, right? Now suppose between two plates of a capacitor electric field is E naught, suppose or E will take and distance between plates is D, okay? So you know this formula E equal to dV by dx, some, that kind of formula you know. So here it becomes E equal to potential difference between plates divided by D. So V can be written as ED, this V which is there, it can be written as ED whole square. So half epsilon 0 A by D E square D square. So this D gets cancelled half epsilon 0 E square A into D. It is an easy way of solving this. Okay. This is the answer to this particular question. There is option number 3 will come. Right. Okay. Now I am going to the 29 question. See the question 29. Okay. It is based on photoelectric effect and along with that de Broglie wavelength also is included. See, okay. read the question carefully. Okay. Now, kinetic energy of the emitted electrons is given by Hc by lambda minus work function that you know. Now, K is the kinetic energy of the emitted electron. Right. So, kinetic energy of the electron I am writing as a momentum of electron square by 2 into mass. This way we can write. Okay. The work function is negligible, it is given. This work function neglect. This will come. Okay. From this one, you can easily find out the P. P is a, you can say, momentum of this electron. Na? It will be 2 mhc by lambda root over it. Right. P is the momentum of this electron which is written as H by de Broglie wavelength. Momentum can be written as H by de Broglie wavelength of 2 mhc by lambda. Okay. On solving this we can get a relation between lambda d and lambda, isn't it? Relation between lambda d and lambda we can easily find from here. Okay. So just quickly I am solving how much will be lambda d from this. Lambda d we can find out from this it will be H root of lambda by 2 mhc like that. Okay. This way it will come but no such option we do have like this. Okay. So that is why it is better that if you square it lambda d square h square this way. From here you get a lambda at least. Lambda will be 2 mc divided by h into lambda d square. Okay. This we can get it. Okay. Now if you look at it option some particular option will definitely match with it. Okay. Option 3 is matching with it. Okay. So option 3 is correct for this particular question. Now question 
question number 30 again it is from the ray optics here some right angle prism is given in this prism this angle is 60 degree and the ray is falling perpendicularly like this ok. So, we have to find out the angle of emergence for this one of course since it is falling perpendicularly na so angle of incidence is 0 it will go straight like this normally it will fall here if I draw normal like this ok see it can be easily proven using geometry that this angle will be 30 degree see this this way if I extend this angle is 60 here it is 90 so this has to be 30 so here it is falling at 30 degree now first of all we have to check that here whether total internal reflection will occur or it will not occur that we have to check first of all so how to check it see sin of critical angle is given by 1 upon mu mu is given root 3 sin ic is 1 upon root 3 okay. this is a critical value ok here the ray is falling at 30 degree isn't it ok now see um, I can say that uh, 2 is greater than root 3 this is correct so 1 upon root 3 is greater than 1 upon 2 ok so this is sin ic value and this is sin 30 value that means IC is more than 30. See this is a very simple way of understanding that whether total internal reflection will take place or will not take place. Critical angle is more than 30, more than 30 is critical. Here it is falling only at 30 degree. So here no total internal reflection will take place. Ray will emerge from here only. This will be the angle of emergence. So here if I apply the Snell's law, okay, it will be mu of prism into sin 30 equal to mu of r into sin e okay. mu of prism 1 upon root 3 sorry no mu of prism is just root 3 sin 30 1 upon 2 mu of r is 1 sin e sin e is root 3 by 2 so e must be 60 degree right so answer to this question is 60 degree clear this was question number 30 okay now going to the 31 it's based on capacitor Okay, if you look at the question, this way capacitor is given. Okay. And we have to find out the net capacitance between these A and B points suppose. See, you can understand this capacitor which is there now. It is both the terminals of this capacitor, both the ends of this capacitor are connected to B only. Okay. So, such capacitor whose both ends are connected to same potential, same point this capacitor never gets a charging from the capacitor from the circuit sorry. So, this capacitor is removable it will never get charged only look at these two capacitors they are in parallel ok and when two capacitors are in parallel total capacitance or equivalent capacitance will be a C plus C that is 2 C. So, very easy question answer will be 2 C for this particular question ok 31 clear. Now I am going to the 32 question, see to it, okay. here force, acceleration and time we need to take them as a fundamental quantities, okay. so using that we have to find out the dimensions of energy. See energy is given by force into displacement, okay. actually force into displacement is a work but work and energy are the same things, so energy is suppose force into displacement. Now force is a fundamental quantity ok, so I will not touch it ok. Displacement is given by velocity into time right. Displacement can be written this way. Now in the terms of dimensions I can say that uh, velocity is same as acceleration into time. See, you will say that velocity is not acceleration into time, change in velocity is acceleration into time, agree but dimensionally it is ok, dimensionally the dimensions of velocity will be same as acceleration into time formula, again one more time is the time square will be there. So see force is a fundamental quantity, I will write it as a F just, acceleration also fundamental for this question and time also fundamental T square. So quickly dimensions of energy will come F into A into T square that is the second option ok. 
वो थर्टी टू क्वेश्चन ऑप्शन टू विल बी करेक्ट दिस वॉज थर्टी टू क्वेश्चन नाउ वी गो फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी थ्री ओके सी क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी थ्री ओके इट्स बेस्ड ऑन न्यूटन लॉ ऑफ कूलिंग ओके इट सेज दैट अ कप ऑफ कॉफी इज कूलिंग फ्रॉम नाइन्टी टू एटी इन द टाइम ऑफ टी मिनट्स देन इट इज ड्रॉपिंग फ्रॉम एटी टू सिक्सटी ओके इन द टाइम ऑफ that we don't know we have to find out that time suppose in the time of let's say t dash minutes okay so surrounding temperature that is theta 0 it's given 20 degrees celsius so we have to find out this t dash in terms of t so all of you know newton law of cooling d theta by dt is some constant theta minus theta not okay d theta is a drop in the temperature 90 to 80 drop means how much it dropped 10 na so d theta will be 10 dt is a time that is t k is a constant this theta we take average temperature so average of 90 and 80 will be 85 na no? minus this is surrounding temperature that is 20 okay so this equation i'm writing k this will be obviously 65 okay 10 by t give it first equation now again using same formula for this cooling from 80 to 60 so d theta There is a drop in temperature, 80 to 60, na. So d theta will be 20. Drop will be 20. Time t dash. That. Okay. Here we take theta average. So average of 80 and 60 will be 70. Minus surrounding temperature. That is 20. Okay. So see to it. Okay. Now this 70 minus 20. Of course, it is 50. Okay. So, if I divide first and second equation on dividing properly, you will get a 10 dash t dash into 10 divided by 20 t. Okay, k k cancel. It's 65 divided by 50. Check this carefully. Okay, so it is 130 divided by 50 equal to t dash into t. Okay, that is 13 by 5 t. Okay, option one will be matching. Very easy question. Newton law of cooling. You should have a just command over it. Okay. This question option one will come. Clear? No. Going for thirty four now. Thirty four is a question which is very simple question from current electricity. Look at the thirty four. Okay. Now here it is said that uh, we are having four wires. This way suppose four wires we are having. All of the wires have same length, uh, same material. and also same cross section area so it's simple that resistance of all these wire will be same let's say it is r now all these wires are having in a parallel combination in the parallel combination the total resistance will be r by 4 isn't it so that resistance is given to you as a 0.25 ohm so here r anybody can find it is 1 ohm okay. resistance of each wire is 1 ohm now it is being said that these four wires are connected in series same four wires connected in series so resistance will be 4r in series it will be 4r resistance so 4 r already we got 1 so it become 4 ohm so answer to this question will be 4 ohm getting okay? now we'll go for question 35 which is the last question of section a it is based on photoelectric effect okay the power of any light power of a light source is given by usually this formula see to it suppose this is the energy of a single photon emitted by that okay n photons are emitted suppose so if n photons are emitted in suppose time of t seconds by that lamp okay so this n is a overall energy emitted divided by time the energy emitted divided by time that is energy emitted per second that is a power okay so see to it carefully power is given as 3.3 into 10 is to minus 3 it's a power given n by t keep it aside energy of the one photon is hc by lambda okay so 3.3 into 10 is to minus 3 this n upon t which is number of photons emitted per second n upon t is a photon emitted per unit time this n by t we need to calculate 
So let's put the value of HC. If I put the value of HC as 1240, this shortcut you may be knowing. Then lambda we can put in nanometers. Keep lambda in nanometers. HC value should be 1240 around. So lambda in nanometer is 600. When you do this, this value of HC by lambda, if you put this, it will come in electron volts. To convert into joule, we have to multiply 1.6 into 10 is to minus 19 as well. Okay. So it is 3.3 .3 into 10 power minus 3 n by t. Here approximately we have to solve. Okay. It is 124 divided by 60. Nearly it will be 2. Nearly. It will be 2 something. The 2 into 1.6 will be 3.2 into 10 is to minus 19. Now, nearly this will get cancelled. Okay, just solve n upon t will come in the power of 10 is to 16. Okay. So, number of photons which are emitted per second will be 10 is to 16. That is option number 3 will come. Okay. So, here we completed section A. Now, we will go for section B of this.